So we are back in Middle Earth and we have the Elves and the Eastlings and Isengard besieging Harad, held by the Dwarves of Erebor and the Woodland Realm. What's up guys and welcome back, I'm Pope John Paul, welcome to the channel if you're new around here and also just welcome back to all of the uh, current subscribers I guess I'd say like that. And uh, yes we are here with some more Rise of Mordor Total War for you today and uh, this is an epic defence I've been told by the person that sent this in. This is a 3v2, as I've already mentioned, listing off the factions there. And uh, yeah, this is sent in by a member of the Discord, Mythic Yeet, uh, who tells me it's a really, really good siege battle. So, we'll have to see whether it keeps to, uh, well, his word, really, on this. And uh, as some elephants just running away, I don't know why they're in Harad, but they are. But uh, yeah, Harad's a really cool map. Um, it's got, like, this little spawn point over here, which you can obviously, like, do, like, a beach landing, almost, like, pretend... The attackers have decided that they're not going to do that, not going to stretch the defenders out, which I'm going to say is a mistake to start off with. But, uh, I don't know. They may go on and win anyway. This is my first time watching it, like you guys as well, so I have no idea how this one goes down. But, yeah, so we have the Dwarves of Erebor here. We have, uh, the... And, and we have, uh, the Woodland Realm in here. We also have the... Uh, Linden is the faction that I, I think I just called them the Elves. And, but yeah, these are the Linden faction here. We also have, uh, Eastlings over there on the left. And we have on the right, we have Isengard, who's got, like, sappers to break down the wall if needs be. But it looks like they're gonna, the defenders are gonna not defend the, fir the first wall, which is probably a good idea. It's a long wall to hold. They're gonna hold the second wall, hold it with these choke points. Though they're gonna send forward a last Garland blade to hold here. That's a strange and bold move, but, uh, no, there it goes. I, I don't know. They seemed like they were going to retreat and then they changed their mind and went back. This is a bold move. I mean, this last Garland Blade here is going to, like, well, have to like, hold the line on its own. It's going to get flanked, you imagine. But yeah, I mean, there's uh, some Linden Noldorian spears just coming off the wall here. And they're just going to look at each other, shape each other up. Maybe the last Garland Blade is going to try and get back. Oh, there we go. The first clash has begun. And we have some last Garland Blades fighting against some Noldorian spears. The Spears will probably lose this fight. Though we have uh, some Macemen of Loki Rim Macemen now coming off the wall. And they are going to flank around, you imagine, the last Garland Blades when they've gathered up a sizable force. So this seemed a bit silly. Like, straight off the bat, this last Garland Blade here just shouldn't have been really sent in. But they're going to send in some uh, last Garland Spears now to come and help deal with it. Maybe they were trying to slow them, slow the uh, attackers down so they could use their uh, archers on the wall. I don't know. I do not know. But the rest of their forces aren't moving forward, so uh, I'm really not sure what they're going to do. But they're sending their spears in. They are indeed going to send their spears in, trying to defend the rear, possibly. But I would have just... Well, you made the mistake. I would have just condemned it and sent uh, the spears just back. But there, there is the classic officer unit there the, in the silver arm. And here come the Loki Rim in the rear. And they're going to start firing arrows now at this Loki Rim. With their uh, archers all the way back there. You can see them ever so slightly. But as always, this mod looks as glorious as ever. And these elven factions are by far and away the best. I can't wait till the next update. It feels like it's been ages since the last one. But it's probably just because of lockdown and having nothing to do. I've just been playing a lot of Rise of Mordor, or watching a lot of Rise of Mordor replays, and I'm just like, when's that next next one coming? When's that next replay coming? Oh, no, that, re that next uh, update coming. But yeah, there you go. The uh, tower's been destroyed with the artillery, uh, or by capturing them. They're actually losing on both sides. This uh, last Garland Blade is somehow winning this fight. Uh, but a lot, as we go on looking down the line... The Elves and uh, Isengard have got in over here. I'm surprised they're not putting crossbows up on this wall here. Like the Dwarves. That's a really good spot for crossbows. Like crossbows aren't great anywhere else. I mean, you could put crossbows up here, I guess. But it's not really not really worth it. Um, I guess, actually, if you could... Yeah, if you could get, like, archers here. Like, certainly Elven archers you could fire all the way as they, like, fire in that breach. But it's unlikely. But, yeah, already the first unit breaking. It's the uh, Loki Rim. They were... They just got surrounded, or not surrounded, they just got, showed their backs and they're getting shot by archers. And I'd hold their fire now with the archers, it's not a really good target. Unless they're going to start shooting this Noldorian spear that's going to probably replace the Loki Rim. But 
But if you've been enjoying the Rise of Mordor content at the moment, and just generally all the content on the channel, and you haven't already, then please do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment. I know a lot of you guys that watch often aren't even subscribed, so come on, we can get to that 2,000 mark if you uh, all subscribe. That ha haven't subscribed, if you all subscribe, we probably get to 2,000 very quickly. But yeah, there you go. The Linden uh, like spears are replacing the Loki rim, and they're just going to take over. And then they're going to get shot now in the back. And look at that. They're just getting... I mean, they're not getting rinsed yet, but their armor's going down. Like this poor guy here, he's already bloodied up. He's not even seen action. And these, uh, these last garland blades are just basically becoming a, uh, a magnet for enemy units. So then allow their archers to just shoot into them. I mean, it's not a bad tactic, but I feel like this sword unit could have been used so much better elsewhere. I mean, it's probably got over 100 kills now. Or it certainly helped archers get well over 100 kills. Yeah, there's an Eldorian spear. It's already getting rinsed. It's losing decisively. Uh, this one in the front's winning. But this, yeah, the Las Galan Blade's now losing. And the Loki Rim's back. And now it looks like the uh, front line with the dwarves is now in combat as well. The uh, crossbows have gone into action, which is a bit bizarre. I think that was just either a misclick or... Uh, they were trying to oh, they were trying to target something and they uh, they went too far forward, one or the other. But these uh, white hand stormers here, really elite unit. Can only bring three of them. Are uh, gonna? I'd say they're gonna do some nasty work to these spears. I mean, they certainly killed. I thought they killed more, but well, apparently they. Oh no, it might be the uh, crossbows that they killed a few of. Yeah, it is. I thought I saw more dwarven bodies than there were actually spear guards dead. Same over here. I mean, this is infantry. This is a really good target. I mean, this is why you need to get guys on the wall. Yeah, I mean, they're finally doing it. Look, there. Here, I mean, these guys are going to get a nice uh, angle. I don't know if this can, this wall can be destroyed. But if it can, then that's a unlucky for the uh, dwarves. Yeah, they're just shooting these, uh, these guys in the back. And they're just picking them off. And they're down to... Well, they've lost a fair few men. They've lost about 20. Yeah, I don't know if the Urukai have any uh, archers. Not archers, uh... Well, even archers would do quite a good job because these guys are exposed. Um, but if they could get the wall, they could certainly destroy that. That would be really, really good for them. Now the Urukai infantry, yeah, I mean, that's doing its best. Finally, that last Garland blade, I think, is... Uh, well, actually, I say finally, it's still in there. I thought it was gone. Jeez, these guys just don't give up. <laughs> that's just... Just nuts! How are they doing this? I mean, hats off to them. They've done a good job there. Now, Las Galan Spears having to hold the line here. They're already losing decisively to these Loki Remacemen. And now we've got the Shock Infantry. We've got the Warlords of Rune in here. One of the newer units that was added to these things in the most recent update. And I mean, I can't get over how great they are. They've got like their ram horns. They look awesome. Really do look awesome. And it looks like it's going to be the Eastlings that are going to control this area. And they've got their archers up on this wall over here. Definitely a really good idea to do in a siege battles like this. This is why you, it's never a great idea sometimes to give up the walls, especially with a really good arch of like opponents like the elves and the Eastlings. They can just really put down the fire on you and like do some damage. And the, yeah, these last Galen Blades back here are just getting focused down. Might want to form a shield wall just to try and give themselves a bit of better missile block. But uh, these Noldorian so uh, spears, sorry, they're forcing their way through. I don't know if that's uh, like they hadn't set up here properly, but they could get that next spear unit could get in behind. They could get behind that through this little gap here. And that would be really, really good for them. They could, the elves could uh, get an early little break. But I'd certainly be shooting down pikes. If I was the uh, archers of Erebor, I mean, they've got a fairly good angle here, I think. Onto these, uh, yeah, I think they're trying to shoot through there. These uh, crossbows are going to try and shoot these guys uh, over this little stream. But it looks like the elves are going to be a supporting army for either, like, attack. And, uh, like, the Isengard's going to really solely attack here. And the East thing's solely attacking up there. I mean, the elves have got a lot of shock infantry left. It's like waiting to go in. They've got really nasty shock infantry. And I mean, they've, they've got a unit all the way over here. Have the dwarves. They need to get that. They need to mobilize that unit. 
Certainly, I mean, they've got lo I mean, they've got lots of reserves. That's the thing. They've got so many reserves. They've got Aerobot Axe Warriors. They've not even really got through, like, many of their Spear Guards yet. They're starting to lose over here. I'm kind of surprised. Oh, no, he's gone back to even now. I, don't, I was going to say, I mean, his White Hand Storm is in here, and they're nasty, but they're nothing special. Nothing special. God, I just can't get over the detail of some of these units. Like the Isengard units and Erebor. Like this guy here looks so detailed. His armor. But it, it's so, so good. I can't wait to see whether they, how they use these sappers. I mean, they, I would have thought uh, you bring them for possibly blowing, blowing holes in the, uh, in the walls. But they can blow holes in units. They can just instantly destroy them. And there you go. The Noldorian Spears did get in behind. I mean, it's a little late because the other Noldorian Spear did break, but it's kind of leaving this whole choke point open. And, I mean, Isengard, yeah, Isengard's going to take advantage of this. He's going to send some Berserkers and some infantry around, and uh, there's going to be an issue here. I mean, Erebor might need to send over some swords, just to, or like some Axe Warriors just to come over here and sort this. Though, I mean, they could certainly take that last Garland Blade, a uh, Spear out and sw swing it around, possibly. They're going to send some swords over, some last Garland Blades here are going to get mobilized by the looks of it. They might need to send those blades in soon. I'd send them in possibly before they just get shot to pieces by the archers on the wall. Because, I mean, yeah, I mean, oh, they've actually broken through here as well. Or are they just giving up the ground? I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. But yeah, there you go. The berserkers are in. The berserkers are well and truly in. I think they, did they get focused on by archers? Or what? I think they did. I think they were focused on by archers. I'm not entirely sure. They got these last Garland Blades out and maybe fought through. Maybe they pulled through. They might have pulled through these Berserkers. But they're going to go after, like, crossbows back here. Not the greatest of targets. I'll go after this catapult here on the left. Take that out. But they're going to get shot as they run away by some, uh, I presume, by last Garland Archers. Yeah. And here we go. Erebor crossbows. They're going to get charged. For the glory of Isengard. All going to the rear of that uh, defense there. That'd be a better idea. These crossbows are pretty nasty. Like they're just like infantry, basically. They're, I mean, they're, like they they won't break quickly. You'll kill them. The, ber the berserkers will kill them, but they don't break easily. Certainly not at this stage of a battle. Well, I'd be surprised if they did anyway. No, you see, they're, it's combat even. They're not even like that phase. They're not even losing decisively. So it's not even really worth it. You're better going after uh, like into the rear here. I mean, these are. Uh, Hopefully these Isengard infantry do just that. They just go into the rear of this defense. And that can undo this Spear Guard of Erebor defense. Yeah, here we go. This is going to do a lot of morale damage. And this might unlock this defense here. Or unlock a... Uh... Well, yeah, I guess unlock this defense. You put you word it like that. But yeah, there you go. Into combat. And now they're back to back of the dwarves. Shoulder to shoulder. They're fighting for Day Nine Foot, King of the Mountain, King Under the Mountain, and King of the Iron Hills. Imagine being King of two different mountains. But there you go. So the Berserkers have also decided. I think they were better in combat there. They were probably not doing great, but they at least stopped these Erebor crossbows from firing into the back of the units. I mean, and just to be sure, Erebor is going to put some Axe Warriors into the back and kill these guys off. I presume uh, Mythic is playing as Erebor since he's, uh, well, Erebor's in yellow and Mythic sent it in. But yeah, I mean, he's just shooting these White Hand Stormers as well. This is just easy kills, easy kills for him. Take them all day. It just gives, like, Isengard nowhere to hide. He's either going to put all his troops outside this other wall and then just bring them in when he needs a new unit for, like, attacking. Does mean that he can't, uh, like, really get any... Momentum. If he like breaks through and he's only got weakened units, it's going to take him a little while to get reserves up to come and like push the attack. But uh, it might be the best way to save lives. Like this White Hand Storm, I have a feeling this has just been, well, it's getting just shot to death here, like gradually. I don't think it, they've lost too many yet, but I mean, this one also, this Urukai infantry definitely has just been getting shot to death. You can see all the dead bodies around it. Um, but yeah, they've now got. All sorts in here, just and that's all going to break eventually. Certainly the flank, not the maybe the other side. But they brought their artillery up. Have uh, the Erebor uh, has a mythic key as the Erebor player. I'd definitely start shooting over here. I'd start shooting these guys. 
Uh, this is a blob here. You've got pikes, that's a valuable unit. You've got uh, white and sappers. They've actually used their ammo. I don't know what they've used their ammo on, but I'm pretty sure that you didn't die if you used your sapper. Like, if they died as soon as they used their ammo. But apparently not. Maybe they didn't all die. I don't know what they used it on exactly. Oh, there's cavalry inside. I didn't even realize. I think they snuck through here. Maybe. I have no idea where they snuck through. But Bane of the Steps are inside. And they're going to do a hammer and anvil. We haven't really checked on the Eastlings in a while after that little push there. And here we go. They're going to turn around and face them. That was not a bad idea, actually. Those spears did just enough damage in their shield wall. And we've got the last Garland Blades holding back the rest. This is a really assorted defense here. We've got the last Garland Blades just stopping any more reinforcements coming up. Which is not a bad idea. It's then allowing this unit to be cut off and dealt with. The cavalry's not going to go up and deal with these archers, but it's going to get focused on. It's like machine gun fires, these archers here. It's like the trenches. It's like the cavalry in World War One. Just like, quickly, guys, we've got to get to the uh, machine gun positions before they gun us down. Because literally, that's what these archers are like. They are like machine guns. And uh, yeah, that's that cavalry broken, I'm pretty sure. Oh, it's wavering. It won't be long. There it goes. And that cavalry, I mean, was it a good idea? Possibly. Possibly. I mean, this, they need to push here hard. Push here hard. It looks like this defense over here is basically finished. Uh, Eastlings have done a really good job. They've uh, had their archers appear on the top. They've been shooting down anything that basically is in reserve for the Woodland Realm. Like, Erebor's been doing to uh, Isengard. But, yeah, so it's kind of like been roles reversed over here. And he's also just been able to, like, his superior infantry, I think. He's got... I think some of the like, Isengard infantry is so much better than, uh... Like, the last Garland. Like, the elves. If it goes one-to-one, -one, possibly. I'm not sure. That's a bold statement by me. But, uh... Maybe it's just because of the archers that they had that extra bit of help. They've also got, like, things like this flanking going on. And this defense over here is a bit dubious. But yeah, here we go. These elves surrounded now. And they just can see more of their brethren coming in and they're like, You traitors! How dare you work for the forces of evil? And uh, it looks like they're going to go in like the Linden Elves with their big swords. Going to go into the back of these last Garland Blades. And the dying words of these last Garland Blades will be traitor. Traitors! And you Linden scum. There you go, and look looks like the rest of Lyndon's gonna like push hard. He's gotta really quickly attack because he's shock interest. He's got no shield protection. And he's actually gonna retreat. I think that's a bad idea. I think that's a bad idea because you can I mean if you stand here great. Oh yes, yeah, look at this. His indecision's gonna cost him men and lives. And like he's losing a lot of dead Lyndon, like just littered across here. Like, look at these poor guys. Look at him. He's just like, oh, oh that one got up though. Yeah, they are getting littered with dead bodies here. And there, I mean, that unit's already basically redundant. It's 38. They're going to be pretty damaged in HP. But yeah, this is their next line of defense. This last Garland Blade defense here. And now in goes Lyndon to fight Laz the last Garland Blade. Or Spears, I should say. I mean, this is just going to be hard for him because they've got all these archers up here. They just have to pray that they run out of ammo soon. I mean, some of the archers aren't in the ammo. Oh, they've broken through. They've broken through. I was going to say, that was a really small Las Garland spear unit here. And they've broken through. I mean, they've got some blades ready. They're going to surround this spear unit. They surround the uh, swords. They should be okay. They just need to keep this Las Garland blade here just to keep an eye on that flank. Erebor might need to send some stuff over. He's finally moving that spear guard that was like had a long, long way away. The yeah, Woodland Realm is looking a bit rough. He's uh, surrounded over here. Is this a shock? Is this Hall Guardians? No. And these guys had gold chevron, triple gold chevron. And they are getting rinsed. No. This does actually bring a tear to my eye. I love the Hall Guardians. One of my favorite units. And they're just getting murdered. Absolutely murdered.
And yeah, these guys are losing decisively. 18 of them left, and they still stand strong. They'll fight to the last man for Thranduil. And his kin. And yeah, they finally broken that Noldorian sword, so I mean, that was a bold, a bold idea. I mean, they did actually need to take out that spear unit. They've got another Noldorian sword in there, in on the front. So, I mean, it is getting a bit shaky over here. I mean, Erebor might need to start thinking about falling back to, like, this final defense, which is up here. I mean, it's got, like, a couple of ways in. You've got one, two, I think there's three ways in. And, I mean, most of them are defended with towers. So, you've got more towers. So, that's great. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the Wooden Realm's got basically no infantry left. And he's sending more up here, which is really bizarre. And he's just luring it in. It's just to get surrounded here by Noldorian swords and pikes. That's a That was a strange tactic. If he can get this unit out, which he's not. He's not going to get this unit out. So, sadly, this last Garland Blade is now lost. And they've like got triple bronze chevron. I don't know how much money he had left. Or, like, if there's a limit on the amount of units he should have brought. I don't think there could have been, because they're three to two odds. Um, he should have really tried... Instead of upgrading his stuff, he should have brought more. Like, certainly his Hall Gardens, it's great to upgrade them. And upgrade them maybe a little bit. But try and bring more units. Because you need more units to hold the line. Like, upgrades will do so much. But, like, men on the front line, or elves in the case of uh, Wooden Realm, are just what you need. I mean, balance power is even. It's uh, 2,300 defenders to 3,300 attackers. Uh, I think they probably got through most of the rubbish stuff. I mean, oh dear, this is not good for the... Uh, Linden Elves. They're just getting focused down. They don't get a chance to stand and just wait because they're just shock infantry, so they just get shot. Uh, so that's really unfortunate. I mean, I don't, wouldn't just stand here anyway because look at the battery that's waiting for you. It's just all these guys. And now they're getting focused on themselves. Uh, if you're rooting for the attackers, then well, look at all these archers ready to deal some deadly blows of their own. Got Elves, got Eastlings. All just shooting up here, trying to hit well, or you can just see the blurs of what is the Woodland Realm up there. I mean, just flank around here. Got a shock infantry, flank around. And there you go, that last Garland Blade. Just finished. And what's this Erebor unit doing here? Why is this here? This is our position. What is this? Are they still trying to hold this line because they should fall back. Fall back soon. Yeah, I think crossbows start to fall back. They need to get all these spear guard back as well. Like, even the one in this breach here, full this back. They've only got a tiny unit of Urukai infantry here. It's getting shot by crossbows. Um, I don't know. You could probably get these crossbows out of here as well. Yeah, that's broken. Well done. Now get off. Get off the wall and go. These guys will hold the line for long enough. Gonna get up this ramp and back into the final defense. They've got Grim Hammers as well. They really need to get them back. Look at these boys. These guys are nasty. You don't want to fight these men. They will mess you up. And every time I look at these guys, I'm just thinking, yes. I could take so many screenshots of you. You look just glorious. Just glorious. And yeah, I mean, look at this. This tiny little unit of Noldorian swords is going to get in here. It's going to be a menace. Just stop this unit from possibly getting back. And yeah, this Erebor infantry over here. Our position. Just getting mauled. I mean, nobody has got pikes in there. The dwarves are just muttering, we never liked those elves anyway. And does they just try and cut as many of them down as possible before they get killed. But they've got elves, they've got Urukai here. There's no chance they're getting out of this. What a horrible, like, mixture. Urukai and elves. Immortality and thick armor. And the desire for man flesh. And yeah, it looks like, uh, well, they're going to just decide to hold this point again. I don't know why. I mean, I guess they can. They can hold it, but they need another unit here in this choke point. I mean, I'd say they're spent of the attackers, but they're really not. they still got, like, halberds here. they still got wars of rune. I mean, Isengard's looking a little thin. Actually, I don't know. If they start shooting these units back here, then the attackers are looking a bit... A bit worrying. But this is not a bad place to hold. But they're going to... Erebor's going to have to send more over here. Like, he's doing just fine in his, his choke points. 
And look at this. Uruka Infantry now going around. They're going to try and contest that breach. But yeah, more men breaking. That's those Erebors. Uh, swords gone. Or axes. And now they're going to have to fight crossbows. It's like, I don't know why Erebors not sent this sword unit up. It's got to go. It's got to go. Otherwise, these uh, Linden swords, well, they're going to make it. Or Nordorian swords, just to say. I'm going to cut down these crossbows. Yep. These crossbows might be dead. He was... I don't know what he was looking at. Maybe something else. So we've got some uh, Woodland Realm ready with their uh, archers. And here come the the axe warriors. But yeah, I was going to say, he gives them an opportunity just to go into the back. Uh, they might trap these guys. Stop them in time. Uh, I don't know. I mean, they're going to surround these uh, axe warriors again. They need to carry on into them. And you I imagine pikes are coming around now. Yeah. Pikes coming around. It's going to be close. It's going to be close. Bounce power is actually shifting in favor of the defenders. But I don't know. I think if they lose this spot here, because they've got so much, cons like, just here. And they keep not doing a great enough job. They keep being too slow and getting, like, a unit into this choke point here, especially. It's just allowing stuff to go into the back and, like, kill these Erebor Axe Warriors. But here come Pikes. I mean, they've got nothing to do with the Pikes. Erebor doesn't have Pikes in uh, the main mod. They're going to get poked to death. There's a tiny unit of pikes here as well. Poke them to death, boys. For the man flesh. Yeah, and there's uh, Noldorian swords. See, this is a, a thing they've been doing all game. Uh, these Noldorian swords, where are they? They like Another unit earlier went round here and surrounded. They should have just carried on pressing in. Um, because it's just like they, they're getting counter-surrounded and the unit's getting killed off. Quicker than they're killing off the Erebor Axe Warriors, for instance. Oh, this is a really good angle here. Look at this. These crossbows here. Literally, I mean, crossbows I find are so hard sometimes to actually get good angles with. But you're not going to struggle here. Literally into the side of these pikes, I imagine they're shooting. If they get the order anyway. Please, please fire. You can just shoot into the side of these boys and get a really nice amount of kills. That's basically a full unit of pikes. Losing decisively? How? It's not even being attacked like in the side or anything. They're just dealing with them. Oh well. That's unlucky. I don't think any generals have been lost yet. Either. Uh, worryingly though, Eastlings seem to be all out of a lot of ammo. Well no, they've got one and these are the elves. Uh, I mean yeah, the Eastlings look like they're mainly out of ammo. Or getting there anyway. And they're having a hard time shooting stuff here. Oh, I say they're having a hard team time. They're killing a lot. These last Garland Blades are really bloodied up. Maybe they haven't. Maybe they're going to use all the am their ammo to, like, actual use. I would have thought that they'd uh, keep some archers and reserve the elves. Just to, like, pull out at the last moment. But, I mean, yeah, they could start shooting these warlords of rune now. I'd open up. If you're not firing, I'd start firing now. Shoot these warlords of rune. But, yeah, it's not going to take much. And they could break through this formation here. I think it could go either way, this one. This one really could. Bounce power says otherwise, but they still have the numbers of the attackers. They're winning here, though. These Wyan Storms have been in the battle since the, the very beginning. That's insane. These guys just don't give up. They're huge, like, sh sh siege shields. I was just about to call it shield siege. I was like, well, that doesn't work, Pope. Doesn't work at all. Yeah, these pikes are losing somehow. I don't really know how. They're not getting flanked. Like, these dwarves are just looking at them head on. I mean, they are getting shot on the side. I presume, yeah, presume by the crossbows now. They're taking fire from someone as well. Are they taking shot by all the archers back there now? Yeah, yeah, here we go. These crossbows are actually firing into the side of these pikes. Oh, that is nasty. That's just brutal. Oh, my gosh. They're dropping like flies. Hit them between the uh, under the neck and between under the under the shoulders and in the neck. That's where their armor's weak, isn't that it? I'm pretty sure. Like Legless says to like everyone around him, and everyone's just like, "Yeah, I know what you mean." Instantly, and they're gonna send in their general of Linden, shipwright nobles being sent in. They surely will swing and take out these crossbows. You need to, otherwise you're gonna have the same fate as these pikes. You need to take out these crossbows, and then you can go... Oh, no, they're going to go. They are going to just go in for these uh, last garland blades. Now they're just going to have the same fate as these crossbows. They're going to get shot on the back. Or in the side, or whatever. Oh, I do apologize. There you go. The shipwright noble now in there. 
They're now going to kill these guys off. Well, you'd hope they are, but look at them. They're already encircled. Jeez. They've instantly gone losing decisively because they got surrounded by these axe uh, warriors. They disengaged with the pikes. These uh, archers are just sitting here. They just went... They made their own grave to this general. Jeez. And now the general for uh, Eastlings is in here. He still has halberds he's not sending out. Send the halberds in now. I mean, they're going to be a magnet for uh, archers. But, I mean, you've got to send them in. It's the last melee, melee unit. Isengard's actually going to get routed here. He's got archers left. He's got loads of spear guard left. His uh, arrow. He's got like two fresh units. Jeez. This is an epic siege. I won't lie. I thought it was going to be a little bit closer. Especially when I thought, well, they might retreat. Might the defenders. I thought they were going to fall back again. It looked like it at one moment, but no, they just held that other line. They just allowed the last golem archers to do work. And this looks glorious. I love the Isengard like, units when they're all nice and close. Up. Look at them, the shiny shields. Don't know why they have shiny shields. It's not like Isengard forces will keep their uniforms clean. Do you think they keep their... I don't think they keep their uniforms clean. I don't think so. You might think otherwise. You might think, yeah, Isengard's... They are orcs actually care about their armor. I don't think they would, though. But these are last, these are Erebor Axe Warriors. You might want to flank them with the uh, Wyan Stormers. Like, Eis Isengard could just kill these guys off really quickly. Save his archers. Save his archers from an unglorious death. I mean, he's going to shoot into them here. It's not really a good idea. going to get friendly fire here. I mean, this arch unit's out of ammo, really. So, it's not end of the world. But, I mean, Harad is a really hard siege to attack. I won't lie. If one of the forces had sent like half their army over here and attacked this or just waited, then they could have done a really good job. But look, this this is burning. That's cool. But yeah, if you attack like some, over here, you stretch out their attack, their defenses, especially if it's a 3v2. It makes it a lot harder for them. And uh, yeah, that, that's like the whole point of the support point. I mean, it's supposed to stretch because otherwise, Haraj, you're just attacking one long straight wall. I mean, they nearly got through but just because of numbers. But I think they are going to get beaten. Oh, and the Elven King's here. What? How did he get out? How did he get out? Is there a way down or all the way over here? I think there is, isn't there? Oh, yeah. If you go all the way around here, I think you can... Yeah, you can flank around. That must be what he's done. He can't pull through all that. He would not be in as good a shape as he is. Yeah, here we go. Thranduil is going to do his bit. Are we going to see the Shock Infantry first? Oh, yeah. The Grim Hammers are in combat. I was going to say, I want to see these Grim Hammers do some work. See the Grim Hammers. Yes. Slap them up, boys. Slap them up. And there we go. The Elven King's going. He's gold chevron as well. I mean, that's not a bad unit to gold chevron up. Your Hall Guardians, again, aren't a bad idea either. And luckily, your eliteness is just about pulled off. But it it was close to Wooden Realm. I think he might have been a bit better bringing some more infantry. Might have needed some. His archers he had plenty of, I think. Just the right on mount. But here we go. Elven King is going to get ready. He's going to... Oh, no. These poor archers. They need to stop. If you keep charging, it's going to be worse. If you keep moving, it's going to be worse. Oh, it's... it's It got worse. Noldorian archers, yeah. Enemy general dead. Which one? Uh, that is definitely going to be shipwright nobles. You imagine. They, uh, they, they got themselves killed very easily there. And the Wyan Stormers have gone into combat over here. I mean, they did route the, uh, surely they route those swords. They didn't route those swords? What's the, uh, they just allow them to go into the back and route all this stuff? They might have won this choke point initially until, like, these guys came up because of all the pikes. But yeah, they're, they're not in as good a spot now because of the sword unit in the back. Poor guys. Poor guys, but I mean, now all the generals really, like, are over here. Apart from the uh, uh, Dwarven one. Where is the Dwarven general? Just chilling at the back of the map. They don't even need him. We've got more Hall Guardians here. They even like had a Hall Guardian left ready. I did think. Uh, surely you bring your full complement of all three. Uh, but yeah, here we go. Looks like. Oh, the Grim Hammers have fallen back. That's allowed the Warlords of Ruin to get through. I mean, it's not done yet. I mean, they are getting inside. But they need to kill some generals soon with uh, the attackers. They need to kill some generals. Here come the Grim Hammers. They're going to do a counter charge. It's going to allow them to get flanked around on these uh, wards of room. And it's not a bad tactic. It's not a bad tactic to allow your units like get flanked and then you counter flank. 
But I mean, they're going to lose this Grim Hammer unit, I think, to the Pikes. Or the Halberds. But I'd start sending in some of these units over here with no ammo. Just to, like, I don't know, fill the line. But the Elven King is... It's not going to take long till this Elven King breaks through all these uh, archers that keep getting sent back to deal with him. They, he's going to break through in some time. And then, uh... Well, I say that. Isengard's nearly in here. Erebor's having to send a lot over here. Yeah, I mean, it's coming down to very little. 1,200, though, to 500 uh, attackers. I love the swords for, like, Isengard. They look so good. They remind me of, like, the, the Roman Spartha. But yeah, they need more units in here to the, uh, to the defenders. It's not quite done yet. Has the uh, general died? He must have died. Broken, no, just army losses. The warlord's rune broken. There you go, chain route. Jeez, that is a chain route and a half. Isengard's the only one left. It looks like the Easting's just kind of lost heart. And the general's going to waver and break into this uh, unit there. And that's going to break him. He's probably going to die there. The halberds did actually return. After wavering temporarily, they have returned. That was so bizarre. They seem to be perfectly fine. Maybe just because they lost so much troops that the uh, Isengard, they just, uh, not Isengard, Eastlings, they just went, nah, that's it, we're done. But it looks like the General's now going to waver as well. League's getting shot on the side from crossbows. Yeah, that's going to be it. I think Isengard's General now going to break. And the Halberds, yeah, they've gone. And that is going to be the battle, it would seem. The Defenders, the Dwarves and the Elves outnumbered but not outclassed are going to hold Harad for themselves. I'm not quite sure why they have it. The Eastlings should have it, really. It is their home. But a Pyrrhic victory indeed for Erebor. And it was actually quite close in the end. Um, I think if they hadn't had that, like, that chain route there, they could have possibly done a little bit more damage. But the Erebor was just coming with so many more spears ready to relieve them. So yeah, thank you to Mythic Cube for sending that in. Uh, he was a really, really good siege at the end. And uh, uh, well played to Manu as well, who was playing as the... Uh, well, as the Woodland Realm. I, was about to, I don't know what I was about to call them, but yeah, I was about to call them like... Las Gal and, and I was like, no, that's not right. And then uh, we've got uh, Leo Low Ponce uh, Van... I can't actually see the rest of his name, but yeah, well done to Leo here uh, for playing as Linden. Uh, we've got RZA here as the Eastlings, and we've got uh, Moritz here as Isengard. So I'll have a quick look at the end results. So we'll have a look at Mythic's uh, army first, the Dwarves, and he's got 147, uh, 141 kills here with his uh, Axe Warriors, 269 with another... His Grim Hammers, which didn't see much action, 129 and 144. But those units can definitely rack up a lot more kills if seeing more action and not getting surrounded. Uh, his Spears getting 120 kills. The best one, we had three fresh units. Look at that. His Crossbows all getting into the 200s, 211, 223, 277 and 246. Well done to them. And his Artillery, which barely fired, uh, getting 14 kills. And then Manu, who was playing as the Wooden Realm, 435 kills with the Elven King Riders. Wow, and he barely was in the combat. I mean, he was running down archers at the end, so that may be the reason why uh, he got so many kills. But uh, still well done. And then 165 kills with his last Garland Blades. His uh, Hall Guardians, look at how many Chevrons they got. And they got, like, no kills, 62 and 42. I mean, this one got 65 and, like, was still really healthy. So that one was definitely on for getting a lot of kills. Um, but yeah, these ones got surrounded and just got murdered. Then 109 kills with his last Garland Spears, I think is the best one. His Archers, uh, he's got 126 kills with his last Garland Archers here. That's the best one of them. And then his uh, Lords of Last Garland, 302, the best one there. So well done to Manu. And then we'll have a look at Leo with Linden. Uh, his best uh, li uh, Noldorian Swords got 193 kills, definitely. The rest is seem to get focused down by archers when they got to that second line of defense. Really unfortunate there. His spears, again, kind of having the same results, really. Just getting focused down when they got too far. By far and away, got the least amount of kills, I think. Uh, probably of any of the players. And his uh, archers only getting, like, 57 kills. Really not great for him. Uh, so, un unfortunate, but... Uh, uh, it's a bit of a learning curve, I guess. You just don't, uh, maybe just don't bring Linden on the attack if you're gonna to get focused down, or you just got to be a bit more conservative with your shock infantry, possibly. Uh, but yeah, I'm sure it'd be a learning curve, put it like that. And then RZA, who was playing his Eastlings, did a really good job initially, seemed to break through uh, Manu's defense early on with those archers on the wall, um, but then seemed to struggle as they got to that second line. And it was that second line that just couldn't seem to break through the attackers. 
due to those wooden realm archers. But uh, here's a uh, Maceman. I've not even seen a single Maceman getting over 100 kills. The best one getting 87 kills. Wow. That's really surprising. They are really good, those Maceman sometimes. Or they can be anyway, obviously, in the right uh, conditions. And in his wars, Rune getting 130. It's pretty good. Um, but again, they can rack up a load of kills as possible. His Halberd's getting 50 kills. And his Loki Rim archers getting 84 kills. I think the best one there. And his uh, Bane of the Steps, I, they got into behind the enemy lines really early on. Only getting 20 kills. Really wasn't worth it, unfortunately, in that little push in. And then Moritz here with Isengard. Um, his infantry getting 68 kills. Again, not a single unit over 100 kills there. It's really surprising. Uh, well, his entire army didn't seem to go over 100 kills. But, I mean, they seem to get a lot of, like, the defenders didn't have a lot left. But, like, none of the factions really got their like, massive kills. I mean, there's a few there. Linden got a few over 100, but, oh, uh, one over 100, but that's it. Um, but, yeah, Moritz, I mean, his pikes just seem to get a blade raid. None of them doing great. His uh, archers getting 51 kills. His sappers. I thought they used some, I saw one of them use its ammo, but I'm, they didn't get any kills, so that's kind of bizarre. And his berserkers just seem to get destroyed. What happened to them? Well, I saw, we saw one of them die, but, uh, like, to archers, but, yeah. It's just seemed the other one must have succumbed to the same fate. But anyway, guys, if you enjoyed them, please do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and leave a comment. And definitely, if you'd like to see more Rides Mordor, do exactly all of those three, especially if you haven't subscribed. We're trying to hit that 2k uh, mark, and uh, there's a lot of you that haven't subscribed, so I definitely recommend you do so. Um, but anyway, Legionnaires, after that small threat there, um, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.